Welcome back everyone, Jake here. Last week on my channel, I made a video titled, Is Russia Winning This War? And in the comments section, I kept getting the same bizarre comments over and over from Russian trolls and Russian bots. I want to see if you can spot their error, but first, let me show you the dictionary definition and dictionary spelling for the word lose to be deprived of or cease to have or retain something. So the adjective verb of lose is spelled L-O-S-I-N-G, losing. So here is the comment uh, I kept getting over and over on this video. Sorry, Ukraine losing, despite what you think, statistics are not accurate, origin Ukraine side. Mariupol fall to Russia, Donetsk, Luhansk also fall to Russia, Kharkiv, Zaporozhia, two, Russia is loosing? Are you blind? This is just, or this are just speculation. Please watch Wyon YouTube channel for real war updates. Russia is winning the war. Ukraine, EU, and NATO are loosing dr drastically. <laughs> that is the truth. You would have to be a complete brain dead idiot to believe that Russia is loosing this war. Complete propaganda BS. LOL, sure, Russia is loosing. Should stop listening to mainstream guys. JC, you are all saying Russians are loosing. Ukraine is winning. Russians are broke broken. Do you really expect that Ukraine can win this war, even if Russian army leave Ukraine right now? At this moment, Zelensky would be most stupid president ever. Loosing several hundred soldiers per day, Russia. Loosing about 60 personnel or so per day, Ukraine. Sounds like BFB to me. Purest kind of BS. I like your coping attitude. Make loosing a winning. LDNR gonna get all you as off suckers. Watching these YouTube videos, it's almost like Russia is loosing. Ukrainian are loosing so badly now. That is why... Russian progression is impressive. Ukraine is loosing. So here is the dictionary definition of loose. To set free release, like to, you know, loosen a rope or loosen a knot. And technically, yes, loosing is a word. Uh, it's a gerund, uh, basically, you know, the present participle for the verb to loose. So no, they're not, they are loosing. Larry O nails it here. I really wish people here could learn to spell. It's losing, not loosing. So obviously people make mistakes. People misspell or they misuse grammar accidentally when you're typing in the comments section on your phone. Even I make spelling or grammar mistakes occasionally. So making grammar and spelling mistakes doesn't necessarily make you an idiot. However, Every idiot I've ever met did not have good spelling and grammar. So this is a Venn diagram of all the people who occasionally misspell or misuse grammar. I know a lot of these people, English is not their first language, so I would never criticize somebody trying to speak my native language and making mistakes. But I will say that every idiot I've ever met has had poor spelling and poor grammar. So what extrapolations you want to make with that, that's up to you. Let me take you inside my YouTube analytics and show you one of my recent videos. This video has gotten over 414,000 views and it has a 97% thumbs up ratio. 15,291 people have given me a thumbs up. Only 345 people have given me a thumbs down. The point I'm trying to make here is that the percentage of people who support Russia and are not supporting Ukraine, at least in the English-speaking world, is very small. It's a very small percentage of people dumb enough to believe Russian propaganda that somehow Russia can win this war. However, in the comments section, there's nothing stopping these 345 people from just wasting their entire day commenting on basically every thread, every post to push Russian propaganda. 
So let's do an investigation here and ask the question, is Russia losing this war? And I'm just going to hit you with some headlines from this week, basically on my channel and all my update videos. It's pretty much all bad news for Russia. I'm not saying Ukraine is doing fantastic. Their basically entire economy and country is going to have to be rebuilt. But just because uh, Russia is killing people and destroying buildings, that doesn't mean they're not also going to lose this war. So this video clip I want to share with you is a Russian politician in a local regional parliament, basically. His name is Leonid uh, Vasikujes, and he's actually a member of the Communist Party in Russia. And this man had the courage to stand up while this parliament was in session and speak the truth. And I just want to show you this clip because this man did a very brave thing. <laughs> So this man stood up in session and read a prepared statement, and he didn't call it a war, because if you call it a war in Russia, you get sent to prison for 15 years. He called it a special military operation. He wasn't critical of Putin. He just stated the facts that young men from his districts are coming home cripples. They're coming home in caskets. They're creating orphans of their children. And there's no military objective to be obtained uh, by continuing to fight in Ukraine. Shortly after he made this statement, this Russian official was expelled from that parliament and also expelled from the Communist Party of Russia. So I guess if you're not willing to invade your neighbor and steal all their stuff, you're not a good communist. Next piece of bad news for Russia is they lost another two generals this, uh, this week, killed in action in Ukraine. The total number of Russian generals killed, I think, is now 14. The Wikipedia page hasn't been updated yet. But there's lots of talk going around that basically the Russian general needs to be added to the endangered species list because they're dropping so fast and uh, Russia might eventually run out. Next piece of news I want to share with you is that the Lend-Lease Act passed by Congress last month hasn't even gone into effect yet. I know day-to-day -day everyone is checking the maps and concerned about potentially the progress on the ground that Russia is making, but I ultimately don't think that, you know, Ukraine is going to lose this war fighting on the ground. The heavy equipment, the heavy weapons, uh, the resupplies are coming. It just takes time. And I know in the moments this is frustrating, but the Lend-Lease Act is going to be extremely powerful, getting in supplies and weapons that the Ukrainians need. And I also want to point out that the Lend-Lease Act uh, by the United States is what helped the Soviet Union defeat Germany in World War II. Russia doesn't like to talk about the contributions and all of the food and supplies that the West gave uh, the Soviets uh, in order for them to fight that war 70 years ago. Next piece of bad news is that IBM and Microsoft are laying off hundreds of employees in Russia as companies continue to exit and scale down their businesses in the country. So this is all part of the economic collapse of Russia that is slowly taking time as the Russian economy just shrinks and shrinks. There's nothing that their central bank can do to prevent this. And lots of Western companies like Starbucks and McDonald's, IBM, Microsoft, these were good paying jobs that I'm sure that these Russians were really grateful to have. 
and now they're unemployed. They're not going to be uh, getting paid anymore, basically. A lot of these uh, companies were basically hoping that this conflict could be over, maybe in 90 days, but now that we're three months into this conflict, they're just giving up. They're permanently laying off their employees, they're giving up their leases, they're giving up their properties inside Russia. Potentially, they might not return for, for years, even if the war was to end. Next piece of bad news for Russia is there's a bipartisan bill that's being uh, passed in Congress now uh, targeting the Russian energy industry. And President Biden has passed a lot of executive actions, but there's a lot more that the United States Congress can do. And they're calling this act the Keeping Russia's Energy and Military Liable for Invading Its Neighbors, or the Kremlin Act. And basically, this would sanction any private company that does business with the Russian energy sector to the point where the United States government is not going to do business with that company. So if this is a Chinese or an Indian company doing business with the Russian ener energy industry, then the United States government is not going to cooperate or do business with that company. It's just another level of bas basically sanctions that will make other companies, other nations around the world hesitant to do business with Russia. Additionally, this week, the United States Treasury made it perfectly clear that they are prohibiting investors from buying Russian debt. On the secondary market, it was kind of ambiguous. Can you be buying Russian stocks? Can you be buying and trading Russian bonds? And the U.S. Treasury has made it crystal clear that no. Uh, I'm sure there's a grace period where banks can get these uh, loans and debt and stocks and equities off their books, but they all got to go. Uh, Russia financially is a no-go zone for the West. But what about the East? What does China think and what is China doing to support Russia in their war? Well, China just banned Russian planes from their airspace because most of them are stolen. So if you're not familiar with what happened in the first week of this conflict, there were a lot of planes being flown by Russian airliners that were basically leased from Western companies. And rather than return the leased planes, Vladimir Putin just nationalized all of them. Vladimir Putin signed an executive order basically stealing tens of billions of dollars worth of these planes belonging to Western nations. And he just wanted to pretend like everything was fine after stealing all these planes. But China doesn't feel comfortable letting Russia fly stolen planes into, you know, Shanghai and Hong Kong and Beijing. So Russia's got a serious problem because if they're ever going to recover uh, their aviation industry, they don't, they don't have a solution because they can't even get parts to repair and fix these planes. So they're not flying to China. Potentially other countries around the world will also ban these uh, stolen planes. Next story I want to share with you real quick I find amusing, and this concerns the former president of Russia. People forget this, but Dmitry Medvedev has been basically Putin's right-hand man for almost 20 years. And this guy's a sock puppet. He has no spine whatsoever. He just says and does whatever Vladimir Putin wants. But he said on Telegram some pretty shocking things. I'll just read this to you. Former Russian President Dmitry Medvedev has made genocidal remarks against Ukrainians as he stated that he will do anything to make Ukrainians disappear. Medvedev, who is currently deputy head of the Security Council, admitted that his Telegram posts are harsh and he just hates Ukrainians. He went on to say that Ukrainians are the B-word and scum, People often ask why my Telegram posts are so harsh. The answer is that I just hate them. They are the B-word and scum. They want death for us, for Russia. And as long as I'm alive, I'll do anything I can to make them disappear. So it's nice that somebody in the Kremlin is being honest about their genocidal intent uh, with their invasion of Ukraine. But why is Medvedev so upset this week 
And potentially it's because his son just got kicked out of the United States. Medvedev only has uh, one child, I believe, and this is his son. He's, he looks like he's in his 20s. And Medvedev has been stealing money from the Russian government and the Russian people for almost 20 years. So Medvedev is a billionaire. I'm sure he's laundered this money to his son now, and his son doesn't have to work and parties it up and lives very comfortably. And I was shocked when I read this story that Medvedev's son was kicked out of the United States this week. And I feel like this story encapsulates the hypocrisy of Russia and the hypocrisy of all of these Kremlin insiders, because while they threaten the West with nuclear weapons and call our governments Nazis and evil and Russia's the great white hope of the world, at the same time, their children and grandchildren are buying property and going to school and living in Paris, London, Vancouver, Sydney, Los Angeles, New York. And his son hasn't done anything wrong. I'm not saying that he is corrupt. I don't know anything about this guy. But at the same time, the State Department doesn't have to renew his work visa to allow him to stay in the United States. So I think a fitting punishment is to make all of these children and grandchildren of these oligarchs go live in Russia. Uh, that's your punishment for the decisions basically made by your fathers and grandfathers. Next story I want to share with you is that according to the Ukrainian government, 113 Ukrainian churches have been damaged or destroyed by the Russian military. If this is a contest, of who can destroy more holy sites or places of worship, then yeah, I guess Russia is winning this conflict. Additionally, Moscow's chief rabbi is now in exile after refusing to back the Ukraine invasion. So this is, I guess, the most senior or highest ranking rabbi in, in Russia, uh, Pinches Goldschmidt. And he was refusing to show his support or express I guess, you know, approval for the Russian invasion of Ukraine, and the pressure on him was so great, he basically had to flee the country. So the persecution of the Jewish minority in Russia has begun. Can you think of a World War II or European dictator who oppressed the Jewish people and invaded his neighbors? How did that turn out for that leader? Next story is kind of a feel-good one, but this bomb-sweeping dog has switched sides to the Ukrainian efforts after being abandoned by his Russian handler. Uh, you know, every little bit helps in this conflict, and uh, I'm sure this dog is much happier now being uh, fighting on the side of the good guys. Next story is pretty incredible, but President Zelensky actually made a uh, frontline visit to uh, Ukrainian soldiers fighting in the town of Lysychansk. And this is no joke, guys. This is right here on the front line. So President Zelensky left the capital in order to go visit his uh, fighters on the front lines. And these are the Russians right here, only a couple miles away. Zelensky put his life in danger, easily being within artillery range. The Ukrainians currently are surrounded on three sides as they make a heroic last stand, basically for this town and for this region. Ultimately, over the next couple weeks, couple months, I think the Ukrainians will make a strategic withdrawal to the towns of Slovyansk and Kramatorsk. But I'm sure that there's a calculation occurring right now, and the Ukrainians feel as long as they're incurring heavier losses on the Russians than losses they're sustaining themselves, it still makes sense to stay here and fight in this town. So is Russia losing this war? And yes, by every met metric, economically and militarily, they cannot sustain this rate of loss another six months or a year. What is currently happening right now is Vladimir Putin is pushing his military to the max this summer while he knows basically they're still at full strength. The Ukrainians haven't gotten the heavier equipment and heavier weapons promised to them yet. They're still uh, training troops and bringing them into their forces. 
eventually uh, the tide will turn and Russia will start losing ground. Will that happen in the next week, the next month, this summer? Potentially not. And I'm not going to dismiss that Ukraine is suffering greatly. They're losing a lot of heroic soldiers every day. <clears throat> They're losing a lot of infrastructure, a lot of homes, a lot of farms. This is what Russia wants to do. They want to overwhelm the Ukrainians to make them feel hopeless so that they'll just give up. Because ultimately, that's Russia's only way of winning this conflict. They need the Ukrainians to abandon hope and just give up. But that's not going to happen. Okay, everyone, that's all for this update video. If you found it informative, give me a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. If you have any comments or questions or know something I don't, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, take care, be safe.